Hi everybody, it's Anna, welcome back. All right, today I'm going to just jump right into the second part of my how to journal choosing a writing tool. So if you have not watched my first video of uh, how to journal choosing a journal, I will link that down below. And uh, the series, or um, I'm hoping that the series will help you in how to start journaling pretty much. Um, I'm going kind of step by step. I've broken it down into how to choose your materials and then I'll slowly get into what kind of things to journal about. Um, but the series is to pretty much help you in hopes of just getting your creativity down on paper, getting it down onto words. Um, it's the question that I'm most frequently asked, how do you start journaling? And I'm really hoping that these tips uh, help you in some sort of way to just start the process. If you're interested or if you know somebody who's interested, you can share this kind of, um, share these tips or share this video. And um, so today it's going to be choosing a writing tool or instrument or pencil, pen, whatever. There are just so many different choices. I've got what I have pretty much laid out in the different categories that I could think of. Of course, I'm not gonna be able to cover absolutely every single pen and uh, writing instrument out there just because there are so many but these I think are uh, for the most part pretty accessible to everybody you can find these online you can find these in store close to you you don't have to usually go to any sort of, sort of a specialty art supply shop or anything to get these most of them are pretty uh, easily gotten so that's why I'm kind of um going to be talking about these. I'm going to start from left to right, I think, um, starting with kind of like your basic, almost like drugstore uh, utensils, um, and then we'll kind of go into more of the specialty things. So I'm going to start on the right here. Um, I've kind of broken these down into, these are the most easily um, accessible items. These are the ones that you can find at like Target, Walmart, Walgreens, everything. Um, if you're a gel pen person, these are great. These are the Uniball uh, Signo 207 pens. My husband really likes these just because they have that kind of clippy um, feature and they're clickable so you don't have to worry about losing a cap. Also these Pilot G210 pens. You can get these in all sorts of colors. You can get them in just a pack of black, but these are great if you know somebody in your life who's not too fussy with their pens uh, and they don't have any components that you have to worry about losing and they write very smoothly. These come in different ink weights as well, so you can get fine tip, bold, medium. And um, so my husband really likes these for his traveler's notebook and for writing down notes and such. And these are great for note taking too, just because of how the ink flows. It um, you can really write quickly with it and not have to worry about your ink skipping on paper. And these for the most part write on all sorts of different paper surfaces and textures. And so that way you don't have to worry about that skipping on the type of material that you're writing. Um, so that's something to think about is the ink weight that you want. Do you like fine point? Do you like very bold ink? Um, and then just ink flow. That's another thing that you want to think about in choosing your pen or pencil is um, how easily you're going to get ink onto paper or you know material onto paper quickly without so much pressure while you're writing. Does that make sense? Um, and also to think about price point. Um, the ones that I'm showing you kind of from the starting point are very affordable. These are ones that you can pick up for like a few dollars, a dollar a pack, you know, these Papermate Eagle pens. These are great for just kind of like your everyday paper. Um, these actually write really well in notebook paper too. So this was my favorite pen to use um, in high school for note taking. So if you're just using kind of like your regular um, college line paper for journaling, this is really great. These flow very well. You have your basic ballpoint pen. I just have this as an example because this one twists up so there's a bit of like a fancier kind of look to it. Um, I think I got this for like six or seven dollars at Office Max or Office Depot and you can get refills for these so that's really nice. You can actually twist this open and get 
refill ink cartridges. So if you're not into necessarily entirely disposable pens, this is a great option. And these come in different designs too, so you can actually get these to match your planner. And I think I'd chosen this because it kind of was the color of uh, my Kiki K at the time. I use this uh, all the time. This is the Uniball Vision pen in a fine tip and it's waterproof ink, which is really nice. So that could be something that you want to look for in your ink type is if it's archival. So you don't have to worry about if you accidentally spill tea on it or, you know, it gets caught in the rain, your words are not going to wash away. So, and then it's got the cap and then it's got the handy clip on it. So that's always nice for um, featured pens. These are also really easy to get. Um, all these are pretty much available at Target. This one is actually from the Hobonichi store. It came with as a free item um, if you ordered one. I don't know if you can actually order this individually from the Hobonichi site, but I imagine um, these kind of Coletto pens are very uh, easy to find anywhere. I know not this specific brand, but they have these types of pens everywhere, so you can get the refillable cartridges. You can get ones that have up to six or seven colors, which is great. So if you're not into carrying around a huge pencil case full of different colors, this will come in handy because you'll have all the colors that you want uh, personalized to you to use in your planner or your journal. Uh, these are definitely at Target, Walmart, and all your supply stores. So this is the Pilot V5 or the Precise V5 Pilot Roller Ball Pen and it's extra fine. It's got the clip on it. These are really nice. They write very smoothly. If you like, um, okay, I dropped one, but that's okay. I've got another color. Um, if you're into felt tip or marker tip kind of pens, these are great. Uh, my husband really likes this one for his Traveler's Notebook, the Paper Mate Flare. And uh, these come in all sorts of colors, so you can really personalize that to what you like. And these Le Pens. So if you are really into the very fine tip marker um, writing, that's great. These come in a myriad of colors. You can get these in whole sets even. So those are great. And uh, this is a Muji pen. These come in different types of ink weights. These last forever, I find. Um, and they come in different colors and ink weights, like I just said. And um, they just look really sleek. I really like the look of it. It's, it's great. Um, Sharpie pens. I know a lot of people like to actually journal with fine tip Sharpies. These are great to just have around if you're doing like big bold quotes or even just um, having around in your desk for like labeling letters and such but um, for those who actually like to journal with these these come in different pack sizes and uh, different colors as well and obviously because they're permanent you don't have to worry about the uh, ink washing out so there we have those um, these are I don't know if they sell them everywhere, but these are also kind of just m more easily accessible um, than the other ones that I'm about to show you. Um, the Uniball gel pens. These come in different sorts of colors. These are great if you get the metallic ones or the white ink ones for journaling on colored paper. So if you have a black insert, uh, these are great. I prefer the silver one on black insert paper, I found, and um, it really kind of gives that pop of color on your in your words in your journal and these write really smoothly the only thing about these is if you journal a lot on um, with these the ink runs out pretty quickly so that's something to think about is how long is the pen going to last you because if you are um, a huge journal like I am where I write every day um, or almost every day and I write a lot um, it's maybe something to, to, you know, maybe stock up on. So if you know you're going to run out, maybe make sure to buy a multi-pack rather than just a individual one. But this one you can buy individually, say at like Michael's or Joann's. They have them behind the cases, but um, you can buy them a la carte, which is really nice. Um, and that's another gel pen uh, example. This is the 
Monami Geller Pen. I tried finding this online, and I'm assuming this is more of like an Asian brand just because I got this free with an insert order that my husband had placed, and they had uh, given this as kind of like a freebie. But they come in different uh, ink weights and line weights, and um, so that's that's another example there. Um, these are the Pilot Friction, Friction, oh my god, Friction pens. <laughs> these are great. I find these are great for if you are using them in your Hobonichi. Just because they are a fine tip and the, not only is the clippy part really handy if you need to, you know, clip it to your insert or your journal, but that is also where you do the retractable uh, pen part. And these write very nicely. They come in all sorts of different colors. You can get them in different designs. Mine just happen to be in Sumiko Garashi uh, characters. And these are erasable. So if you are a person who doesn't quite like crossing things off in their journal and you like it a little bit more neat, maybe the friction pens are something you want to think about. These are becoming a lot more readily available here in the U.S. They didn't used to be. I think you can start getting them at like the Japanese bookstore at Kino Kuniya, um, and definitely online. They're just everywhere online now, which is great. And um, so you can write, and then this tip right here, this little plastic tip is what you can use to rub off and erase that ink. I think it's brilliant for anybody who uses these, especially in their planners. Um, and I find that if you are pretty gentle with the erasing part, this really does not tear up any paper. I've not had any problems with that using it on Hobonichi paper, so definitely wanted to recommend that. All sorts of kind of um, Asian gel pens. You can find these all over Etsy. Um, this is the Totoro one. I just wanted to use it as an example, but these are great. These come in incredibly fine tip. Um, so if you really like that light ink weight, Etsy, online, all those different uh, online resources are a great place to look for them. These are, I think this is just your basic Bic pen right here. Um, it just happens to say Landmark Credit Union because it's the one that we used to uh, sign the house on when we had a house. Um, these are great because it's kind of like a gel pen. Ooh, got something on my hand. These are very fine tip and um, something to think about with these is because it's a gel pen, any of these roller balls, gel pens, um, and I think even then, uh, these, I think these are roller ball, yeah, these. You want to think about how quickly it dries on your paper too. Some of them, because they're finer tip, they, for the most part, will dry quickly on your paper. It also depends on what type of paper that you're using, but the bolder the ink, the longer it's going to take to dry. So that's, um, you know, just a little tip for you there. These dry pretty quickly. These are Microns. I love using these because they are archival ink. They come in all sorts of ink weights. I believe they come in different colors as well. You can find these in any sort of art supply store fine art stores. They come in, um, you can buy them a la carte, you can buy them in packs. So these are great. These are great for illustrating too. So if you are a sketcher or you love to draw in your journals um, to commemorate your you know, memories and all that and memory keep, these are really great for that. Okay, moving on. Um, these are your fountain pens. I don't have too many examples for you, but I can kind of give you the beginner to like the nicer ones. Um, varsity pens, Pilot Varsities are great if you're a beginner fountain pen user. These come in, I think, a three pack on Amazon for eight or nine dollars. So if you're not very sure if you want to invest the money on one, these are great. You can get them in different colors. You can get them, I think, fine to medium, bold, pen but it gives you that feel it gives you that kind of experience on how it writes on paper if you like it these are disposable so i highly recommend those if you want to start getting into fountain pens the bayer 
brand. The, this is an Asian brand, so it does ship from China. You can get these on Amazon, and these are very, very affordable. I think I paid like 2 or $3 for this one, and this is pretty heavyweight, um, you know, metal fountain pen. It looks sleek for, you know, 3 bucks. Um, the caveat is you do have to wait a while for shipping, so if you're okay with that, put the order in and then you wait three or four weeks. Um, these are great. These are not disposable, obviously, because it's made out of metal, but it does have all the functionality of a fountain pen. So um, this Bayer bra um, brand does come with the converters, but sometimes you do have to buy the converters separately or the cartridges. So that's a great beginner fountain pen for you. Start getting into Lamy's is kind of like the next one up. These are, I think, about 20 bucks or so, depending on the style. This is an all-star in ocean blue. And I believe you do have to buy, it comes with its own converter, converter but if you want to change out colors, I would suggest getting um, separate converters for them. And you can buy different sort of ink cartridge colors if you are not into refilling them yourself. But these are great, less disposable. You have this really handy, easy clip-on feature here. These are very lightweight. It's got an aluminum barrel. So these are these are really great for travel, I think, because they can kind of take a beating. They don't ver scratch very much. And um, obviously, you can spend a lot of money on uh, fountain pens out there, but those are kind of more of your affordable versions. Brush pens are great if you're into illustrating or brush lettering, calligraphy. So these are Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens. These come in different um, brush ink tips and all sorts of colors. They're beautiful. Midliner um, highlighter markers are great. They come in double tips. So you've got the one tip there, the one tip there for highlighting, and they are very muted colors. So it's not like your typical neon and um, it doesn't usually soak through paper, which is great. These are great for just your calligraphy. La Pluma, La Plume. These are permanent, I think, alcohol-based. So these are a bit um, for, these are better for thicker paper, I would suggest. And this is the Zig Clean Color Real Brush. And then we've got just a regular brush. I think this is from Muji. But different examples there and then you can always just do uh, water brushes so this is like the cheap version that you can get at craft stores that come in different pack sizes the Pentel brush pen I think is a really popular one I think these are about ten dollars so a little bit pricier but very well made the water is kept here and you can kind of squeeze it out and do your brush lettering or painting in your journals I highly recommend American Crafts Slick Writers. So if you use a lot of washi in your journaling, these are great because these can actually write on the tape itself. Permanent markers don't necessarily, um, do I have it? The Sharpies don't necessarily write on washi or all washi surfaces, but the Slick Writers do. And those you can find on Amazon with different ink weights. Um, okay, I think I'm actually going to cut it here because this video is actually getting pretty long. I'll start getting into this other half in the next video. So stay tuned. I hope you guys are doing well and I shall see you in my next video. Bye!